Hey everyone, this is Mr. Everything, and I wanted to do a review on Sling TV. Uh, it's closing up to 2020, I'm just going to call it 2020. And I'm actually glad that I waited uh, at, at this point to do the video because there's been some big changes with uh, streaming TV via the internet. Now I want to start out just by kind of giving you an idea of my situation, so if you can't handle that, I'll put a timestamp in the description to skip to when I just strictly go into showing you how the performance of the uh, app and service is. So for me, it's actually going on 10 years now that I we haven't had cable. Uh, it was I think around 2010. Uh, the, at that point, the prices of everything were going up, including the cable, and it was just the basic cable. It might have been earlier, maybe years ago, it might have been 10 or I mean uh, 40 some dollars, and it went up 10 to in the 50s. And I think after we got rid of it, it was even up in the 60s. And that was just for basic cable and with the bills and everything else going up that was the first thing to get cut and as a young uh, i don't know what i was a young teenage punk you know it was pretty big i was like oh man i'm gonna lose all the cable and everything but uh, now the tv's so bad that probably after a few years we probably would have got rid of it anyway just for how bad it was and uh, now i use a digital antenna and of sling tv i highly recommend having a digital antenna so you can still get your local stations and they don't require internet so you can just keep those and then just go over to sling for uh, what you'd call more cable stations so i just have a simple flat panel and out of all the antennas i've tried it in this bedroom is the only way that it really works well uh, so that's what i've stuck with i've never changed it. it's been mounted since 2012. Uh, the repack of stations i've lost a few but i've gained a bunch more and uh, I might consider upgrading to a better antenna and set up, but so much stuff is based on the internet. I get CBS, ABC, NBC, Fox, ION, uh, whatever like religious station you have, and then the substations, and then a lot of the VHF I can't pick up now with the flat antenna, but they're really not just PBS and stuff, so I really don't need that. Before, I was just thinking it'd be crazy to waste money on Sling TV or any um, type of paid TV when I don't really watch it but with AEW I'm a big AEW mark I wanted to watch that and I thought it's time to test it and with YouTube it's nice that you can use a little bit of that money that you normally wouldn't want to take out of your income with YouTube so I've been doing it for a few months uh, with the premium package so it's $40 and I think it's only just state tax so it's like I think 42 something so not too bad especially when you consider how much more it would be for regular cable and then you have to have the converter box and use their remote and all that nonsense. Now there were a few options out there but I went with Sling because it's the one I've heard of the most and it's the cheapest which is the most important reason. And also I was considering PlayStation View because I always heard that was a good service and uh, probably a month into Sling I hear that they're canceling their service. Hulu's raised their prices because they carry more stations and I don't know if it was a Disney thing or whatever, but I think they did go up. I think they were already, I don't know, five or $10 more in slang, and I think they went up another five. So they're more expensive, but you do get those extra local stations, which I would rather not pay for because I get them free over the air in HD, and it's not consuming bandwidth. So, and I don't watch that much TV anyway. There is YouTube TV, and being on YouTube is probably not the most correct thing to say, but I don't like the idea of giving YouTube money, a paid subscription for content, because YouTube was always free. And the more we pay for our you know, ad revenue that we would make from our creations, I don't like the idea of giving YouTube a huge income off of cable and celebrities. and Because the more we, I think that YouTube makes money off that, you're gonna see the more that they'll neglect uh, your average Joe and just people trying to make some income on YouTube because they'll say, well, we don't really care about this. We're going to focus on our cash cow now. I don't know if that's true or not, but it's just my speculation. And, and uh, it is more expensive also than uh, Sling TV. Now, I'm not going to show Sling as far as like the like me showing on the website because you can just go on the website and look up the stations. And it's simple. You can go to Hulu and YouTube TV and compare, and you, Sling's the cheapest. Uh, they, they have different promotions. My first month, I think, was $15 off. 
so the 40 made it 25 and I think the 25 would be 10 then or there were some discounts that they had and they usually seem to have that for your first month to try it. So I'll go ahead and switch over to my uh, iPad or TV and do some tests. All right, so the first thing I want to do is just give you a speed test. Uh, I have pretty slow internet DSL. And I just want to show you anything above this because it works well for me. I'll give you the spoiler now. So anything above this, you don't have to worry at all. Anything less than this might be getting a little chancy with it to where it might not be worth even doing this. But uh, as you can see, there, that's pretty much exactly what my speeds would normally be. And that's what I work with, and that's what works for me. Now there was at some point when I was comparing to Hulu and thinking about going to them that I did this, and honestly, this was months ago, I don't even <laughs> know what any of this means. So if you can decipher these uh, hieroglyphics, maybe they'll help you. I think the circled stations were ones that were exclusive to Sling, and the crossed out ones were ones that were on both, and then I did it on here too, but I honestly don't even know what any of this means. And th this list always changes. When I signed up for Sling, they were having a dispute with Fox, so there was no longer Fox, which matters nothing to me because I can get Fox locally. Uh, now FS1 and FS2, uh, it was during pl the MLB playoffs, so I did miss out on FS1 for a while until they <clears throat> added it back. Uh, I've never seen anything on FS2 that interests me, and almost FS1's hardly even watchable to me unless there's a game on, or a few times there was a documentary, it was okay, but I, that's not a channel that I need. Uh, but this couldn't change. Uh, the select, you can buy packages for both Sling and uh, I think the same with Hulu, but I know if Sling you can get additional packages, which I don't really need. I hardly need half the stations that are included as it is. Uh, one thing that I would like is they make sure pretty much all of these subscriptions, they make sure to give you CNN and uh, you can get MSNBC as an add-on. And uh, with Sling, you can't even get your least fake news out of all the fake news, Fox News which with uh, Chris Wallace I don't know, but uh, it would be nice to have that. You, have, you can't even buy Fox News as a package with Sling. Now you can get Newsmax, which probably would be, for someone that watches Fox News, probably be comparable or even a little better. Uh, with uh, Hulu, you do get Fox News with it from what I can tell unless things have changed. So that was one thing that would be nice if Sling had but I really don't want to pay for news anyway, so I don't need that. It's not a big deal at all, really. Okay, so now I'm at the TV. I'm on an Apple TV. I have a smart TV and a little TV in the living room, which I've tested is also a smart TV, but I don't connect my smart TVs to the internet. I don't want them drawing constantly. I don't want uh, them updating when I'm trying to watch something. I don't want ads or recommended apps popping up, so I keep my TVs disconnected and I use a box. I just prefer it that way. I won't get into it. It's just, that's how I like to do it. So I use this on an Apple TV and I have the Sling app and it loads up fine. There are some things I would, I don't think the Apple TV version of the app is as good as, but when you get the product, this is what you're presented with. I prefer the guide view. It's just more traditional. I don't prefer how the guide works, but I'll get into that. So I've sorted mine alphabetically. You can go here. And then you have orange channels and blue channels. They're two different packages you can get. They're both $25 a month or both together for 40. I think I would probably just go with the orange if I was gonna pick one just so I can have ESPN, which again, I don't even watch that much of that compared to when I was young. I'd watch it all day. Now I might just watch it for a game and maybe just Sports Center where they talk about the games and spare us all their other nonsense. Now you can see here, I've had this happen as well, where like the NBA pass pops up. So when the Celtics play tonight, if you click on that, it won't do anything. Like when there's a game, like now it's off air. I think when the MLB season was going on, they had MLB things pop up, but uh, they're not part of my package, so they don't work when you click on them. So I don't know why they show up. And then there are some ways to sort, but I don't find them that useful. And uh, this is hard to do with the Apple TV remote. So if you wanted to get to the bottom of this list, then it starts to hyper scroll. And 
and then it, it takes a second or two to quit. So now that's hyper, now you gotta wait for it to stop and then go again. So another thing I don't like when you're scrolling here is a lot of times, depending on how these blocks are arranged, it'll actually shift it over to the next hour. See like now it put me clear over to two o'clock and if you click on one that's not live then you can't watch it so then you know it, it, it's kind of like i don't know like some type of game or something or you try and get the block so you have to swipe it over if it's not live so so you'd have to swipe back it's not a big deal but it's something that that, that the apple tv app i've noticed that issue with but as far as anything and I, you can see how quick that uh, instantly started playing for me. And I got to watch like the volume and everything so it doesn't get claimed. Because you don't want to be showing live TV streams. But and the thing that they recently added was now it plays in the background. Because when I was testing it on the living room TV, which has an Amazon Fire Stick, it would play in the background. And I was we like disappointed that the uh, Apple TV didn't offer the same feature. But it's more powerful. But as you can see, I'm not sure if that was a commercial, why the screen was black, but you can see it, it's already at a high bit rate here. Uh, I can't tell if that's the maximum quality, but it looks good nonetheless, I'm sure you can tell. Uh, that's one thing I like though, you go to a different station and again, normally, sometimes these basketball ones don't show up, so I'm not sure why it's... So again, not just quite back over. And just like that, it's going, again, not fast internet at all. Even YouTube doesn't buffer this quick. Although I highly doubt that this stream is as good, a live stream I doubt is good as what the, you know, a 1080p video, which is what I like to watch on YouTube. But you can't notice a difference. Uh, the only I've never really experienced buffering. What it does is it'll go to a lower bit rate and then the, it'll get a little fuzzier. But I don't even mind that compared to it pausing and buffering. The only time it does that would be whenever you're downloading or using another device. And if you have faster internet, that may not even be a problem. So you can, uh, I can go on uh, eBay or I can do web browsing. If I go through Instagram, because they have so much crap on there now, if you open a story, then it, all of them, I think, download. So then it'll uh, cause it to delay for a few seconds. But it's not bad. And uh, if you're watching TV, I mean, you kind of want, you don't need to be doing two things at once anyway. You could just stop the stream and focus on what you're doing there. But. Now you can see this one is a little bit lower of a, and you can see that it was how quickly that one resolved into a higher resolution. And you'll notice uh, sports games always look really uh, pixelated. I don't know if it's called like artifacting or something. I noticed that with uh, HD over the air uh, broadcasts. I'm not sure if it's my TV, because it's not like a high motion TV, it's just 60 uh, hertz or if that's something else, but it's no worse than anything else. So it doesn't bother me a bit, and I'm just really happy that it even works because I didn't think it would. I thought it would be like lower um, quality. Uh, so definitely five, six megabits won't be an issue. If you have like one or two, I really wouldn't get this because it might stream without buffering, but it'll be such a low um, bit rate or resolution that it won't be watchable in my opinion. So I would recommend probably five or more. I feel like most people in this country probably have that fast of an internet. And then there are some settings here. I don't use that obviously. I don't use a DVR. I think you have to pay to have the DVR. I, I don't use DVRs anyway. I just don't care about TV that much. But you could pay for it if you wanted. That doesn't do really anything. That's one setting again. There's not much here to choose from and then this I have mine set to no limit There's high quality which that's to get whatever streams going on now uh, I noticed the device is different like the Amazon fire stick high quality I think's like two point some megabits per second 
So I guess it's just dependent on what the device you use. So those are my settings. Again, I keep it on best quality because uh, I can play it at this high quality without any issue. And then I turned autoplay off so when I open it up, it doesn't start doing a stream. But there's not that much to pick from here, but I guess there really doesn't need to be. And I also can use it on here, which I really don't do too often, but just to show you it does work and it works well. It's basically identical, which I like. So here, it's more or less the same thing. So we go to guide. Now, unfortunately on this one, which is one of the things I don't like is the discrepancy in different apps is the iPad and iPhone app, you can't sort by alphabet. So it's this, so now I'm used to it like alphabet on the uh, TV and here it just goes by I think blue and uh, orange. So that's when this starts. And then at least this is all, since it's not alphabetical, all this stuff I can't access anyway is not in this part. And it's the same thing. I think on-demand ones show up like this because there are some on-demand shows on here. The Simpsons used to be, like right before Disney Plus. Uh, I don't think they're on here now. I think, I don't know how it fully works. I mean, I use this for live TV, so I don't care about on-demand anyway. So like now, you can see that it was like everything. And I think how on-demand works with Sling is most stations or shows that are, it only shows what is like on for the week. So if all, cause it's Christmas week, all of the shows that they're letting you view on demand are Christmas, well that won't even let me play it. But it's the same thing. You used to be able to, I guess now cause of Disney Plus you can't. But I think, So let's see here, so season five, that must be what they're playing on TV now or something. And it's not a complete list. Maybe they've changed it because now it doesn't let you play. But that was one way that I could get to on demand was you search for it. But I almost never did that, it wasn't worth it to me. So I've noticed like this show is usually offered on demand now on a lot of services. And see this one, you can watch, it gives you the option, you would just... So those other ones right now won't let me, but this sh um, show is on demand. But I don't really care anyway, so... And it's basically the same thing. I think when it's on demand, it'll let you watch from the beginning. And you can see just how quickly it gets you right into the stream, which is nice. And uh, there you get a little plug. Uh, one thing I like, and I'm glad that it's doing it, is now this is streaming at 3.7 megabits. And this was a problem that I had up until today, because I haven't used it on here in a while, was whenever I was watching, no matter what, I could never get anything on the iPad to stream in HD, so I'm glad that's been fixed. And that's weird though, because this service has been out for many years, so why they're, within the few months I've had it, they've changed things and added features, you would think that would have been rectified years ago. So again, you can see here that now the megabits are different, it's 2.8 instead of 3 point whatever it was on there. And I'd like to show that, because it's just not intrusive, it just comes up when you touch the screen so I can see the speed. So I had it set on best quality and it would never go above 2.3, like so it would be medium because it wasn't enough to be high. But now, today, it works just fine, so maybe they finally fixed that. Try another one. And again, you can see it just quickly gets you going. See, now it's at 1.2 megabits, so I'll give it a few seconds here and see if it goes any higher. But again, this is probably dependent on my internet. So now you get 2.1. This is the problem I had. It usually stays here. That other station was coming in higher, but I don't know if your internet connection will matter because I've also used this on my iPhone. 
and it works just fine, same way, it's the same app. And I use my phone service, which is like 30 megabits a second. And they say you can't stream with it on phone, but it worked for me, so. I mean, it would go through your data like crazy. I have prepaid, so maybe that's why they let you just use your data how you want. But even with that fast internet, it still wouldn't come in any better. And it seems like this station, so that still has a bug, I guess, to where it just never, but with the smaller screen like this, it's not that big of a deal. And the last thing I want to show here is I have no trouble even with my internet doing two streams at once. So the bottom one, the iPad stream still going and then up here and the top stream is like the max bit rate again, it's nice and sharp. Uh, the one on the iPad, maybe that's why because it's not, but I wasn't doing anything whenever it was still lower. Now I have two streams. Usually one of them will go lower just because of my internet, that's really pushing it. But uh, not that I'd really do that, but if I, when I was doing it on the living room with the Amazon stick, it worked and I could watch TV on here and in there, but they usually weren't the top bit rate. But it wasn't horrible, it was just a step down, so it was still watchable. And uh, again, you can do it here with the iPad. Now, you can only do, with an orange station, you can only watch one stream, I believe. And with the blue station, you can watch up to three at the same time. So like, I think Fox, FS1 would be a blue. So you could have that on three stations or on or three TVs with that same station. And with uh, ESPN, that's an orange station. That would, could only be on one. You could have it running on both, but then after like 30 seconds, it realizes it and stops, I think, the older stream. Not a big deal for me because it's mostly just for me. And uh, maybe sometime I have it on in the living room. You can see it buffered real quick there because of the two streams, but it's still really good. It only took a second, and now the resolution's a little bit lower on the TV. But uh, for most people that have faster internet, this isn't going to be an issue at all. So I'm really happy with the service. I'm not sure if I'm going to keep it that much going forward. I just wanted to try it out. Maybe I would just uh, keep one. I'd probably go with orange just to have ESPN, because almost all the orange stations are the exact same as blue but you get ESPN and Disney instead of uh, uh, Fox, which I don't really need. So I might just pick one. I'm really happy with the performance. I was pretty impressed at how quick it is just to go to your station. It picks it up instantly. It's HD. And I can do two streams at once if I want to. And my internet, it's not perfect with it, but it works pretty good. So for most people, I don't think they'll have an issue at all. So it's very reliable. The service is good. I know people don't like it as much because there's no uh, local stations, but again, for me, that doesn't matter. I would recommend over the air anyway for those. So the, the channel selection is okay to me. I really hope they keep the price at 40 a month. I would rather them cut stations that want to charge more, like Disney with ESPN, they might raise it more. Just make it a separate package and keep the regular price the same. I don't, I would definitely not pay any more for it because I don't even watch it that much. When I first got it, I had it on almost all day for a few days and then it kind of the novelty wore off. I'd basically just use it for my, my AEW. But uh, aside from that, I can live without it. But it is pretty good service, it's nice and reliable. So I would recommend it. Uh, you can search the other ones to see if there's any differences in stations, but I, for me, this one is just fine. So hopefully going forward, they can keep the price here and I think it's a viable option. So thanks for watching and you'll see me in the next one. Have a good one.